Forget that you're mad and just say wow, cause NEAS is monthly now. First it was not a show, then it was a show, and now it's a magazine. A video magazine. We still have pranks and we still have fun, but now we'll just be getting it done in a magazine. Call NEAS Monthly Weekly. Hey, it's your boy Grease, and I'm back with my regular voice, not doing the voice thing anymore. I uh, also want to give a heartfelt thank you to everyone who subscribed to the Patreon. Over 100 new subscribers, and we really appreciate it. They took some of the money, and they actually bought an electric chair. They're going to use it to zap me up and kill me. So uh, hopefully I can sneak in and do the season finale next week. I haven't shown the growth I was hoping for, but this will still be a wonderful story if I can just sneak in a final hosting duty before I die. Oh, how beautiful will that be? And how beautiful is this week's episode, folks, as we've got Daryl Kraft doing an interview, plus calls from tech head Terry and Officer Steve. First things first, though, sometimes when you're doing an interview, it can be dangerous and you can get extremely physically injured. And that's what happened in this interview. It's something I'm really proud of, and you're going to love it. Check it out. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Patriots Only. No, sorry. I'm just going to start again. One second. I'm... Sure. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Patriots Only Freedom Fight Edition. I am your host, as always, Pete Clinton. Uh, here we uh, talk about what it means to be a constitutional conservative. We are constitutional conservatives, America first uh, freedom fighters. Uh, we've had enough of the rhinos and the Democrats uh, 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 with their toothless uh, policy decisions, and we're looking to fight back. And we don't have a whole lot of time around here for people who aren't willing to take that fight out to the streets. Uh, today, we are joined by somebody who is a fellow freedom fighter and is definitely willing to take that fight out to the streets. It's Rusty uh, Johnson. Rusty, is that right, Rusty Johnson? Yes, sir. That's a fantastic <laughs> name as well, by the way. That's a good old-fashioned, classic American name. Uh, nothing wrong with that, definitely. It's it's really Russell Johnson, but that's a professor in Gilligan's Island, and I don't like to be called professor, so I go by Rusty. So, all right, absolutely. And Rusty <laughs> is kind of a cool, cooler name as well in basically every way. Now you're running for uh, Congress in Indiana. Do you think that Republicans and Rhinos are doing enough to fight for our freedom uh, in Washington? Absolutely not. That's not right. Even doing you're that absolutely in Indiana. You're absolutely right. That's that's the answer I was looking for. That's the answer I was looking for. They absolutely are not doing enough. They're not fighting for our freedom. Um, and uh, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I don't have time for people like that. You know, we're out here. Uh, uh, fighting and when people aren't willing to do that and they're up there in their in their ivory towers in their offices quite frankly it, it makes me sick to my stomach and yep. I think to myself like what the oh! Oh! Oh!
So as I was saying, we have to fight. We have to continue to fight for our freedom, and we have to make sure that we're doing that. Thank you so much for your time, Rusty. Appreciate you coming on and doing the interview. Thanks so much. Thank you. Officer Steve happened upon a show that was disparaging police officers and saying they should quit their jobs in protest of the January 6 arrests. And he knew exactly what he had to do. He was fired the fuck up, and so was the old guy who Techhead Terry called. Check him out. Well, the fun bunch knows how to have some fun. If you've met any of them, then you've met everyone. We do have two callers. I am so sorry here. Let me uh, go to two callers real quick, and we'll we'll end with this. My apologies. Uh, you're uh, uh, Richard in Philadelphia. You're on the Kinetic Faith Radio Show. My apologies for <laughs> for uh, waiting so long. Go ahead. <laughs> is this me? It is. Um, okay. So I'm I'm a I'm a law enforcement. Can you still hear me? Yes, I am. Can you hear me now? We can, okay. we can hear you loud so and clear. My name is Steve. I oh, I'm sorry. Uh, my apologies. It looks like the uh, call screener got it confused, but go ahead. Uh, uh. That's okay. I'm, I'm a law enforcement officer, actually, so I found it quite interesting that you left me on hold so long while you guys talked uh, all about, you know, what I do in my profession and what I ought to be doing and how you guys know so much more about what law enforcement officers should be doing and how I should be quitting my job, apparently. Is that what you're telling me from your cushy little uh, chair doing your radio show? What I'm telling you is that there is a moral and ethical standard, and if you become weaponized by a tyrannical state, you will have an accountability to God, and it doesn't matter how comfortable or uncomfortable I am because your issue isn't with me. Do you understand, Rick, that out on the streets, we are God, sir. We are the ones who make the rules. We, we are the ones that you have to abide by. And here you are telling me what I ought to be doing. And, and I find that unbelievable. It's the left who hates law enforcement. Why, why are you so anti-law enforcement? You don't think when someone breaks the, the law that they should go to jail? You're trying to break people out of jail now? You're trying to break people out of jail from your cushy little seat on your radio show because you don't think the police did the right thing? You're a leftist. You're no better than the leftist. You're anti-police. Uh, I am pro-constitutional police, so we can clarify oh, that. Oh, oh, oh! So when it fits your, so when it fits you, when it that's fits great, the Constitution, sir. It's yes. so nice to see. Con- It's so nice to see conservatives uh, showing their true colors here. And guess what? The true color is not blue, my friend, because it's not supporting law enforcement. You're a sick individual. Why are you sending stuff to prisoners anyways? What's that old guy? Who's he sending it to? Kyle who? Kyle who? Who are you sending stuff to and why? So you can go back and look at the show and you can find the resources yourself because we only got a couple minutes. I'm going to get to another caller, but I'm just going to say this. I don't care what level badge you wear. You're there to uphold the Constitution. Oh, you don't. Oh, it's nice to know you don't care. Well, you 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 have no badge. <laughs> oh, so I only have, apparently law enforcement only thinks you have a voice if you have a badge, and that's, so that's an that's, interesting attitude yeah. that they have. Kind of speaks to the hubris that they no, have. No, you have American an interesting public. attitude, Rick. You have an interesting attitude, and that is you think you know that what? you're the big tough guy here, and you think you can talk down to me. Why don't you contact me after the show, and then you you got the means through the through the media here. Contact me. We'll have you on the show, sir. How about that? Oh, I would love that. I would love that. All right, we'll talk. Okay, take care. All right, thank you. All right, let's go to the next caller. Next caller, sorry for uh, keeping you holding there. Uh, Who do we have on the station here? uh, Because it was a little bit of a mix-up on on the, uh, the wording here. Well, it's well, Officer, Officer Steve, Steve again, again, and guess, guess what? what? You, guys you guys are scumbags, and you're anti-police, and we got, we got no time for people, for people like you in the movement, movement. trying, to, trying break to break people, people out, of out of prison. Steve, now we got you in stereo. Thanks for saying it twice. Take care, man. Dumb and dumber. Uh, I got to tell you, it, they, they, they think that they're making a great dumb case. They make they make they think they're making a great case, but but they're kind of making our point that you 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 don't wear a badge, you can't have an opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, you 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 qualify support for law enforcement under constitutionality, and suddenly um, you're the leftist, which is kind of an interesting uh, argument. Um, you don't 
um, you, you, you support uh, political prisoners because you think their treatment is, is extreme and stacked against them, and suddenly you're the lawlessness. Mm-hmm. You're the lawless one. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I, I found it interesting that he said that, you know, we are God on the street. Yeah, that's, you know, that's, it, that's it, pretty frightening. That is the attitude that we're up against today is that there's this hubris that says there is no God above us. There is no accountability above us, and you will answer to us. And that kind of makes our point, doesn't it, about why we're so afraid of the tyranny that's coming down on Americans. It's highly unlikely his superiors would want to hear that uh, that attitude. Thank, thank God for that, I guess, eh? <laughs> I'm not alone. Uh, I, got, I got Terry on the phone at 613-413-2217. Are you ready for a call? I am ready for a call. Terry, Terry, Terry go, go ahead. You're on with Lowell Green. Green. Hey, Lowell, how are you? Terry Go ahead, here. sir. Right, uh, right to the topic. Yep. My friends call me Techhead Terry. Um, you having some technical issues with their – you got some lag going on on the stream. I was just wondering if you could use some technical support, some help on figuring out your latency issues and stuff. I know I, you're I an older gentleman. So. Have you got, any, have you got any, any comments on our topic, Terry, or, or just trying to straighten us out here? Well, I'm trying to straighten you out because it's hard to watch. And I know that older gentlemen tend to have trouble with technology type stuff. And even your co-host isn't the youngest guy. So I was just well, curious. Well, thanks, Terry. That's... Of... Terry. <laughs> You know That's what? That's just a fact. I mean, I'm Terry, not trying to I have I have a little message for you. Kiss me ours. Let's right. move on. Bye bye. Let's Terry. move on. These smart asses. I I've had it with smart asses. You know, every time I say I'm confident in Canadian public, we get a jerk like Terry. Go ahead. Well, I appreciate his concern. Anyway, um, I'm not I'm not hearing oh, from no, anybody else saying that there's just trying to be too. a smart ass. To, you know, the old guy. If I hear that phrase anymore, I'm gonna. I you know what. Go ahead, uh, John. You've got some other comments here. Uh, I don't know. Why, can I, I ask why? you a question? Why, why the hell do I do this? Why? why bother? <laughs> Does anybody care anymore? I don't know. Anybody because care about the country anymore? You do this because I've convinced you the technology is flawless. And Terry uh, had to go and ruin that for me. All right, here we go. Jim says, I'm in Florida watching and no lag time for me. Thank you, Jim. Uh, and a couple of piss off Terry comments. And what a cloud. There you go. Stream is fine, says uh, Chris. All right. Uh, whoever goes shoulder to shoulder with... This next interview is Daryl Kraft absolutely in his element, doing an interview with an ex-militia member running for Congress and showing off his comedy skills, doing a little bit of improv and stand-up comedy. Really, genuinely, one of my favorites as well. Check it out. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Craft Corner. I am, of course, your host, as always, uh, touring level stand up comedian Daryl Craft, aka D Craft. I've been throwing around the name D Craft, uh, maybe just a little bit of a rebrand or whatever. Um, but uh, here we talk about the intersection of uh, politics, free speech, comedy. Um, and today we're joined by uh, somebody running for Congress in Georgia. His name's Michael Bogus. Michael, how are you? I'm good, sir. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Um, now, you have a cool name. It sort of reminds me of uh, a lot of my old friends and a lot of the, the boys in the old 1990s stand-up comedy. Um, a lot of them not with us anymore, a lot, unfortunately. A lot of them have, have passed away. Um, but you have kind of one of those cool kind of stand-up comedy names like uh, Danny Dillweed, Roger Bimbo, were a couple of my contemporaries, Tony Pussy, Richard Falk. Are you familiar with any of those stand-ups? No, sir, I am not. Yeah, they're, they're mostly kind of like local um, guys. Although I think Tony Pussy was on Alan Thicke's Thick of the Night. He did a set on Alan Thicke's Thick of the Night. Um, <clears throat> you know, okay. So you used to be in a militia, right? A racism militia? No. Oh, were you not in a, the three? Okay. I was just going to say I was in a, um, I was in a stand up comedy, uh, sketch troupe, uh, called the Na- nasty boys. That's the way Which was the nasty boys? Yeah, like uh, nasty, nasty boys. Kind of like, uh oh, you're in for it. But we would never get booked anywhere. 
uh, basically because of cancel culture and free speech stuff. The nasty girls always getting booked everywhere, but the nasty boys, nope, not no thank you. We don't want your shit is what they used to say. Um, I noticed you had some endorsements on your website, and they were on the web. And they were from Cameo, and so I guess you paid the people to do that. But Eric Roberts said that he was related to you in the cameo by marriage. Is that true? Is he really related to you? Uh, he is related to me. But so it's wait not a about second. Marriage. Wait a second. He's related to you, and he made you pay for a cameo. Whatever. I'm sorry. Whatever. I'm sorry. I mean, who who cares? Do you want to do some improv comedy together? Do a little bit of improv right now. Sure. Okay. Do you know about improv? A little, very little. Okay, well, we'll just get into a scene then. Um, I'm going to do a different kind of character. I'm going to do my old man character. All right, here we go. We'll start now. Uh, who uh, are you coming t for the... Are you at the DMV? No, I'm at the grocery store. You're at the grocery store? How come you got your dick out and you're pissing everywhere? Stop. <laughs> Don't take your dick out and piss all over the place. You're pissing all over my ass. My ass is covered in piss from your from your pissing on me. Put it away. So, uh, let me ask you a question. Hang on a second. Sorry, I do it's an interview, so I, it's generally and this is a fun thing about it when they let me do these interview shows is I get to actually ask the questions. But is yours about stand-up comedy? No. Okay, then we'll move on. Um, do you want to hear some of my stand-up comedy? Sure. Okay. So I was at the grocery store. Oh, you'll 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 like that. Right. You can relate to that. I was at the grocery store, and there's this uh, there's um, they, oh, they've got a little bit of a sale on prunes. So I says I said to the guy, Oh, can I make it into juice though, please, governor? And he said, I don't work here. Why are you talking to me so much if I don't even work here? And I was like, well, why don't you work here in this economy with everything that's going on with inflation and and the prices of, <laughs> and the prices of prudes and everything like that? Um, okay, you can ask your question now. Okay. Oh, um, I'm sorry. We just have run out of time, and I don't make the time schedule. I feel really bad because I did got to do all of my stuff, and then you didn't get to do any of your your stuff. But good luck to you um, in the uh, to win the election. All right. See you later, man. Have a good night. All right. Or bye -bye. day time. It's day still. All right, everyone, that's the end of the main episode. But as I mentioned, we've got a lot of new patrons, and I decided to reward them this week by making an extra special Patreon episode. It features a great call to JJ, as well as a Candidates Canal interview featuring Brendan Walsh. Really, really good shit over there. Check it out if you haven't already, and thanks to all of you who did. All right, let's hope I don't get murdered before the next episode. Who do we have here? Good morning. Stupid old Elmer Fudd looking motherfucker. Wow. Th that guy took his time to do that. Isn't that impressive? This is what we, this is the kind of mentality that runs our country. <laughs> uh.